Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be discussing first layers. Now, most of you who've been printing for a little while know that first layers are very, very important. Okay, because with first layer, it affects your whole print down the line. And uh, not to mention, you always want to start with a good, smooth surface that sticks to your bed. If you're building something tall or going up or even three, four inches, uh, believe it or not, if you don't have your first layer down right, it can lift off your uh, off your bed and your nozzle can hit it, knocking it over, uh, things like that. So you want a very strong, good first layer to start off with. And in this video, we're going to go over some of the things that you can do to help you reach that goal. Now, keep in mind what I'm going to go over today is only going to be a portion of things that you can do to improve your first layer. There are many, many things that come in play that affect your first layer. But for me, these are the top ones that I'm going to talk about today. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now to help you understand how important first layer is, um, I'm going to go and compare it to a house. Imagine your house being the print and the foundation being your first layer. If you do not have a good foundation, your house will eventually fall or have damages or structural issues or things like that. The same rule applies with 3D print. If you don't have a good first strong layer, um, eventually it will cause your prints to either fail or have imperfections or things like that. Okay, So some of the things that you can do that's not in your slicing software uh, would be first of course level your bed um, you can do this manually um, my printer does it doesn't have automatic leveling so I do it manually I actually prefer it that way anyways um, but if you're lucky enough you can use the automatic bed leveling where it does the work for you now if you're doing it manually of course you gotta do the old school paper test slide in, wiggle around, shimmy it, give it that dance and uh, see if it grabs the paper but not too much. Now, what else can you do? On your printer itself guys, leveling your bed is the number one thing. If you don't have that right, I mean that's just in general all prints are going to go to shit. But <clears throat> another thing you can do is make sure you set your nozzle height to the correct height. Okay, now if you look at this picture here, in the first part, you'll see that the nozzle is too high. And by doing that, what's going to end up happening is your filament is not going to go ahead and stick to the bed as good as it needs to. So that at some point in your print, there is a chance that it might come off the bed, causing damage or your print to tip over. You need a little bit of pressure here because if you don't have that pressure it's not gonna uh, glue it or you know com uh, combine it with the bed so it stays. Okay. Now if you look at the very last one that's uh, your nozzle is too low. What's gonna end up happening here is either you're gonna damage your nozzle itself or you're going to damage your bed or glass whatever you have on your bed uh, or tape it might scrape that as well. Um, also what that's going to do is not let the filament flow very well so you'll get like little gaps in the middle and again same thing affecting your print in the long run tipping over not sticking very well now if you look at the middle one the big green smiley face that's what you're looking for when the nozzle is laying the filament out you want it just enough to where it's pushing it down a little bit but not enough to where it's not letting it flow out uh, comfortably. Okay, so make sure you go ahead and adjust your nozzle height. That is also a very, very important step in getting that perfect first layer. Also, another thing you can do is what kind of product are you going to use to keep your print attached to the bed? so it doesn't move and it sticks well. Um, people use hairspray, they use Elmer's glue, 
Uh, some people use special plates. Uh, there's multiple things that you can use. Um, but don't take other people's advice on this one. I learned this the hard way. Just because tape and glue works for me, it might not for you. Hairspray works for some people, it didn't work for me. Um, so just play around, do some test prints, and see what works well and what sticks, and then just stick with it. And then from there, you can move on to those big prints and not have to worry about, oh, is my print going to tip over, or is it not going to work, or is it going to move around, things like that. So adhesion is another big step that you need to consider when trying to get that perfect first layer. Also, before just starting, guys, quick side note, please check the temperature and bed temperature that comes on your filament. Most of them have a label there that tells you what the temperature should be or between what ranges. Also, if you're trying to heat up your bed, uh, it also uh, has a little bit more detail in there or the manual because not all filaments are the same, even though all, like, some people think all PLA is the same, all ABS is the same. It's not. They're different. Um, what I always do on big prints is I try to at least print one, two small things just to see how that new filament roll is working for me. And then according to that, I make the changes for my big prints. So just a side note, please keep in mind of the um, information that's listed on your spool. All right, so these are the things that you can do um, that's not related to the slicing software. So level your bed, check your nozzle height, uh, what kind of adhesion you're going to use, and make sure you get the correct information as far as temperature, uh, either whether it be nozzle or bed, what you're going to use for the filament you're using. All right, now moving on to the slicing software itself. Um, before we get started, the first thing you guys are going to need is um, a first layer test, something to print out that's going to test how well your settings are. So on thing, Thingiverse here, there is a um, template that you can download and print. I'll put a link to this at the bottom. So once you've downloaded this here, uh, we're just going to go ahead and open up our slicing software like so. Go ahead and get the first layer test printed. So let's get this bad boy in there. There we go. It's not that big. It doesn't take that long to do. Um, <clears throat> but there it is. This is going to be the first layer uh, test. Uh, this is what we're going to test our first layer with. Sorry about that. Um, but it's just a little octagon shape here, and we are going to set some settings on this on the side, and go from there. Okay. So now keep in mind, this is not every setting to get that perfect layer. Uh, there's no such thing as perfect, but this will get you very close. Um, and as you experiment down the line with other settings it will work out better for you. Now keep in mind guys, there is the basic settings here that you can use. The custom settings are even better, but I learned the more settings that you change manually, there is a higher chance that you may mess up your print in the sense that now there's more um, things involved more more changes are being made instead of just the factory settings that came with the program so just be careful of that I'm not trying to scare anybody but once you do some trial and error and you find out what's good for you and create a profile you can save it um, I don't do profiles I do every print separate I, I change the settings on each one separate so um, that's why I don't have a default profile anyways moving on so we got this down here I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just switch it to layer mode there not much to see at this point because this is a very very thin layer okay so the first thing we're gonna do is layer height um, I notice when most people try to make videos on first layers they make everything perfect like this setting they make it point one 
uh, for layer height. For initial layer height, they make it like 0.5 if your nozzle is capable of it. If not, then they do 0.1. But that's not what I'm trying to go for. Um, I'm going to give you adjustments that you can use on any print. Okay. So, of course, like most prints, most of you out there, we're going to leave this at 0.2 for layer height. Uh, initial layer height, we're going to leave it at 0.2 as well. Now, line width, that's just how wide the line is. Um, for the first top and bottom line width, guys, if your nozzle is 0.4, uh, change it to 0.5. What that's going to do is give you a thicker layer at the bottom and it's going to come out to where it's going to have more surface to stick to. And then after that, it'll go ahead and go back to the 0.4, which is my nozzle size. So if you have a 0.3, you can go 0.4. If you have a 0.4 like I do, nozzle size, then just go ahead and make this a 0.5. That thing will help you out. Okay. Um, so the next thing we can do is we can go down... Um, Wall thickness at this time is not, not, a, not an issue because we're just worried about first layer, okay? So we just did the first layer width. The next thing, of course, will be what I talked about earlier is check your temperature on your filament. Uh, mine says anywhere from 180 to 210. I'm going to go and leave it at 205. That's what I'd normally print at. Uh, the plate, of course, PLA, most people leave it at 60. Um, Diam diameter and flow you should already know retraction is not going to be an issue but i'll just leave it checked off anyway now here print speed when you do your regular print um you can do it at 50 60 70 depending on what what quality you're looking for okay travel speed is the distance between two pr uh, two items that you're printing um but this is the one we're looking for initial layer speed when you're laying down your first layer, which is this yellow thing right here, leave it at 30 or even 20 or even 40. Um, don't go higher than 40. What that does is it takes its time and lays down the first layer. It's going to take maybe an extra 5 to 10 minutes on your total print time. It's not that big of a deal, but this will help... Uh, stick to the bed better and it'll go slower and give you better quality on it because we've already turned uh, up the uh, the width of the of how wide the nozzle is actually going to put out the filament on the first layer only uh, which is the top and bottom okay so moving along print speed we just talked about that okay cooling enable Print cooling. Of course, you want to have that on, but the initial fan speed, what you want to do is you want to put it at zero. What that's going to do is since you're printing at a lower speed, you got more filament coming out, it's going to come out hot, stick to the bed, and by the time it gets around, it's going to cool on its own, but it's going to stick a lot better to your bed. Trust me on that. Um, it took me a while to figure that out, and uh, when I did, it was pretty good. Another thing you can do to get um, a good first layer is you need to get the nozzle flowing before you get to your actual print or what you're trying to print. So I would probably, right here, okay, under adhesion, just pick skirt at least minimum because that'll get one line going. I usually pick brim or ref. Okay, the reason for that is because by the time, so right now I have it on brim, right? So this blue part is what it's going to print first. And my print is what's in the yellow. So this is going to lay down some filament, get the nozzle flowing. If there's any issues, you're going to catch it here. And once that's done, it's going to go to your print itself. So these are some of the features that you can use to uh, not guarantee but increase the chances of you having a very close to perfect first layer. Um, the only side note I will say is with ABS guys just be careful because you do need an enclosure and ABS is very complicated in a way 
because any kind of wind or cooling that hits it, it can get it to warp or crack. So uh, I'm not going to go too much into it, but with ABS, just use an enclosure or build one or whatever you have to do. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and print this and show you what the final result is. But before I start, let's say you did all these settings and you set everything to a perfect 100%. Uh, percent, and that is like the perfect settings for first layer. But yet your first layer is not coming out right. There is a possibility that the STL file you downloaded from online is not a good file. The mesh file has been corrupted or there's holes in it uh, and that's why your first layer is coming out pretty crappy and it's not sticking to the bed at certain points but at certain points it is. Um, so that could be one of your issues as well. So just try to run it through a, um, a program. I, I use Mesh Mixer. I just import the files in there and I repair it and then I bring it back out and then drop it into Cura as just a safety precaution. So uh, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and show you the print and what the end result is. But before I go, for those of you that don't know how to bring up these additional features, um, you can just go to like Sander Shell or Quality. You can click on this little gyro looking thing and it will bring up the additional features here and if you check it off notice right here it just added one on so pay attention to this 0.5 if I take this off notice uh, it moved up and deleted the additional line that's one way you can get there another way is if you go to Cura preference and you go to uh, sorry settings and it will be here as well. So these are many features that you can use in Cura, but by default they're not selected. Um, so if you're watching this video and you want to do what I'm doing, just click right here and just pick whatever I have and then change the settings on this. Um, this is going to be the actual settings that I'm going to use. So um, I'll scroll down a little bit if you need to pause it to get a an idea of what to put in. There it is right there. Okay, all right. Well, again, let's go ahead and get this sucker printed and uh, we'll go from there. So if you'll notice here, my first layer moves a little bit slower, but then as it goes on to the second part, uh, it actually speeds up a little. And this is my end result here that you see. Um, so basically, if you notice, you can actually see the blue tape right across or right through it. Um, I didn't have any holes, any gaps. Uh, I mean, it's basically perfect. Uh, that's the way I would want it. And when I peeled it off, it actually was very smooth on the other side. It's actually rougher on this side. Um, so, yep, that's it, guys. That's my first layer right there. And I didn't have any trouble taking it off the bed once it cooled down. Um, it stuck perfectly. The only thing I did do is I went back and took the brim off because I was like, this is the first layer test. I didn't need it. So um, I did modify that one part and I did not record that. So sorry for that. Um, but that's basically it. Uh, this is my first layer. You can see um, the actual crossing of the tape on this one. You can see through it to where it dried up and the blue's coming through. Um, and these are the settings that I use uh, on most of my prints, even on big prints. So I hope this helped you guys a little bit, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, again, sorry it takes so long, but I like to get into detail to explain everything down to the wire. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, please leave it below. Uh, if you like the channel, go ahead and subscribe. If you like the video, give me those thumbs up. If not, um, then just drop me a comment, and uh, if there's a video you'd like to see in the future that I haven't made yet, uh, let me know. And uh, I hope this helps somebody out, even if it helped one person out, that's well worth it. And uh, like always guys, good luck and happy printing.